tutorial, today I'm going to talk about how to set up Drastic. As you may or may not know, Drastic is an emulator for DS. And this is a paid app, but it's absolutely worth it. So before we start, let's make sure you have Drastic and your PC with you. You can find all the things you need from the download link in the description. The configuration file is from Taki's Discord, so I really have to give all the credits to him. And I really have to thank the guy, Adi Spags, who helped me through the ADB setting in Discord. I hope I'm not pronouncing your name wrong. There is an introduction document in the zip file. You can copy each of the commands that you have to type in from this file. I provide this document just in case you have any difficulties in typing these commands. To begin with, go to search bar and search for command prompt. And I'm sorry that this is just based on Windows. Click run as administrator. And then click yes. Then the Windows command processor will come out. You'll probably start from here. Make sure you unzip the file I provided and put it on the desktop. Then type in cd space dot dot. Then type in cd backslash users. Next, type in cd space your username. You can check your username from the C drive users. Then type in cd space desktop. Next, type in cd space platform hyphen tools. Next, type in adb.exe. You probably see this. Next, type in adb.exe space devices. You'll find your device ID at the place where I colored in pink. Now we are sure that we are connected to our Retro Pocket 2, but we'll not be able to push the file directly to Retro Pocket 2 because we'll have to gain the root access. In order to gain root access, you'll have to type in adb space root. Then you'll probably see a message telling you that you're using adb ds root. Our last step here will be typing in adb space push space drastic config space slash data slash com dot dsemu dot drastic slash. I know it's super long, so if you don't want to miss it, just copy it from my instruction file. You'll see a message telling you three files pushed if you do it correctly. Now you should be able to configure the mapping for um, screen swapping and menu. To do so, you'll have to go to change options, click external controller. You can do the basic key mapping by clicking map control and you want to turn off your mouse mode during map control. You can map your keys in the way you want. And we will go to map special to map the special function keys. You have to swap between mouse mode when you do the mapping here. You can skip the key mapping for the functions you don't need with mouse mode. In my case, I mapped the key swapping function to my R2 and I mapped the menu to my L2. So now you'll be able to play the games. Let's look at how to set the screen layout. Go to general in the options. You can decide your default layout. In my case, I select landscape one. Then you have to go into a game. Next, you want to bring out your menu. Remember to turn off your mouse mode. 
and then click menu. Scroll down to find Edit Screens and Virtual Pad. Pick the layout that you have set for default. You will be able to change the location and the size from here. You will want to use your mouse mode to do so. Remember to save it as global layout before you quit. You don't have to follow exactly as my screen layout, you can find a way you like. So now we are all done. Let's go into the game and see how it works. You should be able to swap the screen and bring the menu. So that's all for this tutorial. I know it's a bit long and complicated, but it is absolutely worth it to play DS on Retro Pocket 2. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe my channel for support.